hello guys you're welcome back to another sewing tutorial with ruby in this video i'm going to show you guys how to draft and cut an all shoulder bust here if this sounds like what you want to know how to do please don't go anywhere i keep watching and if you find this video helpful please give this video a big thumbs up and if you don't subscribe to this channel already please go ahead and subscribe and also don't forget to turn on the notification so you get notified once any video goes up So we already have our lines marked as usual. So from this shoulder line to this line here is the bust line. Then from this shoulder line to this line here is the waist line. And um, from this shoulder line to this point is the full length of the blouse. The bust broad is 7.5. So this is our 7.5. I'm going to fold um, the tape into two to get the midpoint of 7.5. So that 4.2 mark, I'm going to take it all the way to the waistline and then to the full length of the blouse. I'm going to go ahead and connect my points with a straight ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and determine the armhole of this blouse. The armhole is a bust measurement divided by 6. I'm going to add 1.5 inches to that. So that is going to give me 8.6 or you can either measure the armhole round. So the armhole round is 17 inches. I'm going to fold my tape to get the midpoint of 17 inches. And what I have here is 8.6 so we are still on track. So I'm going to mark my 8.6 right here and I'll take that measurement across. So this line is going to be our upper chest line. The under bust measurement is 15 inches so I'm going to mark 15 inches right here. So let me do a quick recap. This is our upper chest line. This is our bust line. This is our under bust. This is our waist line. Then this is the full length of this blouse. And then this is the shoulder line. To cut the off shoulder, it depends on how low or how high you want your off shoulder to be. Here, I'm going to come down by three inches. If you want your off shoulder to be very low, you can come down by five, six or seven inches, depending on how low you want it to be but this one is an off shoulder blouse but it is not going to be low so what this means is that this part we are marking is going to go off i'm going to connect my points with a straight thriller so this part is going to go off now for the neck width i'm going to make it 11 inches what i usually do is 10 inches all right that is a standard for me well here I said to try out 11 inches. I really didn't like it, but if you want to try yours, please use 10 inches. Except Breton is a very fat person. So what we have here is 5.5. I'm going to mark 5.5 right here. So I'm going to add an extra allowance of half inch to this. This is going to be for the seam. So this is going to make it 6 inches. But if you are doing this for a very slim person, please make it 5.5 inches or even 5 inches. Our bust measurement is 42.5. I'm going to divide that by 4 and what I have is 10.6. I'm going to take that to the bust line and I'll draw a straight line to connect it from the upper chest line to the bust line. So I'm going to draw a straight line to connect it from our neck width to our upper chest line. So this is going to be for the back armhole. To get the front armhole, I'm going to get the midpoint of this, which is 7.2. I'm going to fold this tape to get the midpoint of 7.2. And what we have is 3.6. I'm going to mark 3.6. So I'm going to come in here by 3 quarter inch. This is going to take care of the excess fabric that usually come out around the front area of your dress. So I'll connect it up to this um, shoulder line with a straight ruler from that point where we came in by 3 quarter and I'm going to use my armhole curve to finish up the curve. So I'm going to measure this um, front armhole to get the midpoint.
So the midpoint is 4 inch. I'm going to add half inch to that, which is going to give us 4.5 inch busts. Because I don't want this um, bust point to point out after everything, I'm going to come up by 1 inch from the bust point. And then I'm going to come down here by 1 inch. So from this line that I marked, I'm going to mark half inch on both sides of this line. So coming to the under bust, I'm going to mark one inch on both sides. I also take that one inch down to the waistline. So I'm going to make a connection from this point where we came down by one inch to this new line that we marked. So I'll come here and try to curve this a little because I don't want our boss to point out. As this comes down to the hip area, it's going to reduce. So I'm going to place my ruler in such a way that it reduces to nothing once it gets to the hip line. So this is actually our bust measurement 10.6. So now this is what will happen because I'm going to cut this in the middle and once I cut I'm going to join this on a half inch mark and then that is going to take away one inch from the actual bust measurement. I'm going to add that one inch to the bust measurement. So what I'm going to do is to add extra one inch to the original measurement which is going to give us 11.6. The under bust is 34 inches, 34 by 4 is going to give us 8.5. On a normal, the 8.5 is supposed to be here, but because of the mathematics that will go on around here, I'm going to add an extra to that. So we marked 1 inch on this side, 1 inch on this side, this is making it a total of 2 inches. I'm going to join this on a half inch mark which is going to take away half from this side, half from this side and it's going to give us 1 inch. So the total we have going on here is 3 inches. So that 3 inches I'm going to be adding it to the actual on the bust measurement. The waist measurement is 34, 34 by 4 is going to give us 8.5 and we have 1 inch here, 1 inch here. I'm going to join this and once I join it, one inch is going to go out. So what we have going on around here too is three inches. So I'm going to add that three inches to 8.5 inch mark, which is going to give us 11.5. So I'm gently going to connect my points. This is where our hip measurement is supposed to be. Whatever you have for your hip measurement, divide that by four. But because of what is going to go on around here, I'm going to join this by half inch. Half is going to go up from here. Half inch is going to go up from here, which is going to give us one inch on a total. So I'm going to add that one inch to the original hip measurements. So I'm going to use a hip curve to connect my points. So this is actually the front armhole and because of what is going on here, one inch is going to go off from here. And I'm also going to join this by half inch, that is half inch is going to go from here and half inch is going to go off from which is going to give us one inch. So because of this extra one inch we have here, I'm going to add that to the original, you know, bust measurement so that it won't affect the bust. So this is going to be our new bust line. Because I'm still going to join this by half inch, I'm going to go up by one inch from this line. Oh, sorry guys, I shouldn't do it here. So I'm going to make the, um, the correction right now. So I'm going to come up from here and this will form part of our new armhole. So I'm going to go ahead and you know put my um, side seam allowances. I'm going to be adding one inch to this original measurement, but you can add 1.5 or two inches or half inch as the case may be. So 
So coming over to the neck line, I'm going to uh, give this a little bit of a depth. Now it depends on what you want. If you want the neck to be V, you can, you know, give it a V-shaped neck. If you want it to be round, you can make it round. I'm going to come down by one inch. So before I cut this, I'm going to use this to trace out the back. I already gave one inch allowance for the zipper. This is the line you're seeing here. So I'm going to make sure that the line of the center front, you know, stays on this place where I marked my line for the zipper seam. So I'm gently going to start transferring my lines to the new paper. So I'm not going to mark the waistline because the waistline for the front is um, 17 inches but the back length is shorter than 17 inches so I'm going to stop here for now. I'm going to transfer the armhole to this. So I think this is all we need to get from this front um, bodice. So I used the front pattern to trace out this um, new pattern because the other one was looking all messy and I want you guys to clearly see what we are doing without any distraction. So I transferred it to a new paper. So to create the back that I'm going to from this upper chest line I'm going to come down by one inch. So I'm usually come down by half but I'm going to come down by one this blouse is actually a very long blouse it's longer than the normal blouse i usually make so i'm going to come up from the hip area by three inches so i'm going to mark our bust broad which is 4.2 our bust broad is 7.5 i'm going to divide that by two which is going to give us 3.7 and i added half inch to that which gave us 4.2 Coming over to the waistline, I'm going to mark half inch on both sides. So for the neck, I'm going to come down by half inch. I could leave it straight this way if I want, but I'm going to come down by half inch. So I'm going to give this a little bit of curve around here so to avoid the usual super bulge you see at the back of her dress around the waist area I'm going to come in by half an inch that half inch I'm going to take it up all the way to the upper chest line And then coming down, I'm going to take it all the way to the hip line. So this has altered the zipper allowance that we gave. So I'm going to also um, come in by one inch to, you know, mark the new zipper allowance. This works like magic. One thing I tell people about Lauren is that you should just be open to new things. Whatever you see that is trending, try it out. If it works for you hold on to it if it doesn't work for you please drop it but you need to keep learning new things that's one thing that makes you a good designer so it's time for us to cut I didn't put both that in this pattern and it was intentional but I want the back to be one inch shorter than the front so I'm going to mark that So this one inch I took off from the back piece, I'm going to make sure it reflects here 
but don't mind the fact that this back is a little bit curvy or curvier than the front once i take out necessary things that i want to take out from the front it's going to appear smaller I'm doing this because I need the sides to be equal so I'm going to curve this but I'm not going to take it all the way to the point where we have a line. So once you put this against it you're going to see that the sides are equal. So I'm going to go ahead and cut our front pattern. Please pay attention to the lines that we are cutting. So we are done. This is our front pattern. This is what it looks like. If you've watched this to this point, please give this video a thumbs up if it has been helpful to you so far. All right. And subscribe if you've not done that already. If you've watched this part, make sure you subscribe so you see the part two and understand how the whole thing is being um, put together to form a dress. So to cut the sleeve, this is an off shoulder. I have my paper folded into two. So we are going to be doing a little bit of mathematics here. So this is our neck line. Remember our neck is 5.5 and I gave an additional half inch allowance for seam. So the neck line is 5.5 and if I multiply that by 2, I'm going to have 11. So the back has 11 inches. Then for the front too is 11 inches. When you add 11 inches for the front to the 11 inches to the back, what you're going to have is 22 inches. The off shoulder round is 38 inches. So to get the sleeve, what we're going to do is to minus that 22 inches that we got for the front and the back from 38, which is the entire off shoulder measurement. So this is going to give us 16. So I'm going to divide that 16 inches by 2, which is going to go for the two sleeves. So one sleeve is going to take 8 inches and then one sleeve is going to take 8 inches. I don't know if this makes any sense to you. So this sleeve is going to have 8 inches. Because the paper is folded into two, I'm going to mark four inches. If I open it up, it's going to be a total of eight inches. Then the other sleeve is going to be the same. So I'm going to bring back um, my back bodies and try to trace this. So the sleeve round is 15 inches. So 15 divided by 2 is going to give us 7.5 inch. So this is where our 7.5 inches mark falls. So remember this is our 4 inch mark and I gave an additional allowance of half inch which is going to be for the seam. So I'm going to join this on a straight line. So the sleeve length is 12 inches. So I'm going to add half inch to that, which is going to make it 12 and half. The elbow round is 12 inches and 12 inches by 2 is going to give us 6 inches. So if you fold your tape, you're going to have 6 inches. So 
So now that we have this, I'm going to add one inch allowance for my seam. So coming over to this point, I'm going to come down by one or half inch. If you want to leave it straight, you can, but I just chose to come down by half inch. So remember for the front um, bodies, I came in around the armhole by three quarter inch. I'm going to do the same thing on the sleeve. I'm going to get the midpoint of this line and I'm going to come in by three quarter inch. So this is what our sleeve pattern looks like. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut. So to cut the front armhole, I'm going to open it up and then cut out the front. I'm going to use this piece to cut the second part of the sleeve. This is what it's going to look like when you join it to the main bodies. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel if you've not done that already. Until next time guys, feel free to leave any questions you have in the comment section below and also feel free to request for any type of video you would like me to make for you guys in the future. Until next time guys, my name is Shubi and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye!